still enjoying it and move straight on? Nah, we've, uh, look, at nights like that, uh, you know, you really got to, you know, try and embrace it and enjoy it for, for what it was, but uh, it was short-lived. Uh, it was short-lived because, you know, focus quickly turned to, uh, to tomorrow night's game uh, against Sydney, but... Uh, yeah, well, it was a very good performance and you know, still immensely proud. But uh, as I said, you know, we've got to uh, replicate that tomorrow night now. Can you harness it though? Because it's a very good win and, and yeah. it builds confidence. Without doubt, yeah, we've not achieved anything yet. You know, we've we've achieved a, you know a very good performance and a good result tonight. But you know, we've got some some goals that we want to achieve, and uh, it was a step in the right direction to achieving some goals the other night. Uh, not only in that competition, but some confidence going forward in uh, in the domestic competition, in the finals. But uh, you know, we we haven't achieved what we want to achieve so far. There's still a lot more to achieve from this group. Adrian Layer, uh, yeah, one for him or yeah for tomorrow for tomorrow definitely. Um, he, he'll, he'll be short. He won't make tomorrow night's game. Uh, it's positive news though because there was no uh, no fractures. Um, so it's from that perspective, it's pretty good. But uh, you know he'll work tirelessly to get himself available for Tuesday. What's the actual injury? Well, it's just a, a bad knockdown on the top of his foot, and uh, uh, it's a shame because he you know he worked so hard, ever so hard to get himself you know right from his uh, from his fractures in his face. Um, and uh, from his perspective, it's pretty disappointing. But uh, uh, the group will rally around him. You know, he's pretty pretty upset. But the group will rally around him and, uh, and put in a performance tomorrow night worthy of three points. How's what about Tommy Rogic? Is he available? Not for tomorrow. How's Pablo travelling? Uh, tra Pablo's fine. Yeah, he'll yeah. play. Yeah, yeah, Pablo's fine. So Pablo's no issues. Old man stretching out there. Uh, we've, uh, you know, he's at a, you know, there's. Uh, enough's gone into you know his loads and what you know what, what he needs to get up for the game and uh, he's he's certainly available for tomorrow night you know and he was he was immense on Tuesday night he was you know, brilliant on the night. Um, just on Rogic, is it still the same situation? Where's yeah. he at? No, he's making progress. Uh, it's not the same as it was last time we spoke. He's he's definitely making progress. He's working uh, ever so hard to, to get himself uh, uh, as fit uh, as quickly as he possibly can. The staff have given him all the attention that he does need, and quite comfortable about that uh, where he sits at the moment in terms of his recovery. So, is he any chance for next week if yeah. you advance? Yeah. Three vastly different games against Sydney this season. Mm. The first one was a bit of a roller coaster. The second yeah. one very unfortunate for yourselves, and then they came here last time and put in a really good defensive performance. What are you yeah. expecting? In this game and from how they'll set up look i don't think you know i think at this stage of the season that teams aren't going to change dramatically you know all of a sudden just for finals uh, i think what we've seen in the previous three games against them were pretty similar um, albeit they changed uh, you know tacked a little bit in the last two games uh, that were in melbourne the way they uh, they set up uh, in possession but uh, look it's it's a finals game it's you know it'll be a good occasion you know Melbourne loves a, you know, a big occasion, and, and this is as big as they come for us. And uh, there's no reason why, you know, there shouldn't be a big crowd there for, uh, tomorrow night. Uh, you know, being the weekend, obviously the Easter weekend, Good Friday, um, and and the players do deserve a, a big crowd to come out and, and really get behind them because uh, our last two performances have been very, very good. And uh, you know, we've we've timed this the run perfectly in times of, in terms of form. Um, and again, you know, I dare say that the idea will be to reproduce a performance, uh, um, you know, of the calibre of our last two games. So you're hitting the straps at the right time. Yeah, and look, even you know, you've you've witnessed that this morning, and that that didn't look. It's the first time you've not asked me about fatigue or tiredness or anything, because you know, as you can see, that session was really bright. Uh, there's, a, there's a real determination and a group of boys that you know everyone wants to play and. Uh, uh, that session was, you know, as bright as it's been for for a long time. So, uh, it's certainly good signs. Was Australia Day the turning point in your season? Um, I don't know. You know, trying to look back and, and you know put a finger on you know uh, you know when a turning point was. I think you know we've been you know striving for performances you know over the last two weeks uh, for a long time and. Uh, you know, you don't you don't uh, gain consistency over two games, but uh, going into this one here, there's a, you can see there's a real buzz and a real confidence uh, about what we're trying to do, and uh, you know we've looked very very threatening in, in, in recent weeks, and uh, you know that'll continue tomorrow night. Do you think other clubs would be worried about you? It's not it's it's not for me to say. You know, it's not for me to say. Was it? Uh, you know, if I was coming up against us uh, tomorrow night, I'd be a little bit paranoid about. 
uh, you know, the way we attack and the relentlessness, you know, of the last few weeks, you know, just the real determination to go out and attack and then score goals. You know, we'll put anyone under under pressure uh, defensively. Um, and, you know, that was evident on Tuesday night against a, a very good team. You spoke about Contreras and Leia, but how about Nathan Coe's comeback from getting dropped out of the side to the performance that he put in on Tuesday? Yeah, I mean, it's, and we use the word drop, but it's pretty harsh, you know, he wasn't, wasn't selected. Uh, and uh, he was, you know, trying to, pick a, trying to pick a bad player in the last few weeks, or an average player. You know, everyone played their part, but Coe was, Coe was very good. He made uh, vital saves at, uh, at the right times for us, so uh, he was very good. And, you know, he's reacted very well to, to not being selected throughout that period. Is and, Archie uh, mentally OK after what he's been through this week? Is he right to go? No, nah, Archie's, yeah, Archie's definitely OK. Uh, he was, uh, you know, it's obviously a tough time for himself and his family, but uh, um, he, he come back, uh, he come, got back to Melbourne last night and uh, he's raring to go and he's, he was actually very proud of the way the boys played on, on Tuesday night and, uh, um, you know, Archie's a big game player and uh, he wouldn't miss this one for the world. Lots made about fixture pile-ups and shoes you yeah. kept, but when you're getting results like now, you don't, you want the games every day, don't you? Yeah, without doubt. And, uh, you know, they probably prefer playing in the games and me shouting at them on this uh, on the training pitch. But uh, you know, in a funny way, you know, you can you can embrace what you you know what you've been what's been thrown at you, and and you can get some positive performances and positive results, and and it's galvanise the group. You know, and like I said this morning, the training was you know that sharp, and you know everyone put the pressure on. Uh, on each other, wanting to play and, and wanting to be in the team, uh, but it has certainly, uh, you know, got the group the group closer together, um, and uh, I think that's, you know, the proof's been in the pudding in the in the last, you know, few performances. Can tell us about the challenge of facing Del Piero, a player who can still change a game but effectively mm. can't even move anymore. It's a it's a strange combination. Yeah, but you've got to respect his ability. Uh, you certainly got to respect his ability. We, you know, we've analysed uh, them enough to know that we can take advantage of certain things. Um, uh, but at the same time, you know, we've got to limit uh, uh, the amount of times he can get on the ball because, you know, as you said, he's still got immense ability. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we've, you know, apart from the first game, or the second game, sorry, here, um, you know, we've handled that quite well. And uh, uh, he's, a, he's a very good player that's going to uh, need a lot of attention. You've got those look in your eyes that you're about to run out on the pitch right now. You know, I, feel like I feel like I could play as well. I've got to say, about that. did you ever come up against Del Piero in your career? Oh, now you're testing me. Um, I don't think so, no. What would your methods have been for uh, negating I think him? I think we know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs>